evening, everyone. Uh, this is the seventh lockdown lecture series of the Progressive Students Forum's lockdown lecture series. We are going through challenging times with the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus and the subsequent lockdown. In such certain times, locked away from the limited resources of support structures which will have the marginalized sections of our society face the brunt and increased hostility and the discrimination. In the seventh lockdown lecture series, today's lecture, we'll be talking about queer left politics in education and labor. Today, we have Gaurav Ghosh with us, who is a queer rights activist and an amazing theater artist. Welcome, Gaurav. Gaurav will be talking about the importance of and need of the queer activism and left politics to come together, especially with respect to public education and worker struggle. Over to you, Gaurav. Hi, uh, uh, good evening and hello to friends and comrades of PSF and also outside PSF. I'm audible, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. So uh, welcome to PSF's uh, lockdown uh, lecture series and uh, today's uh, uh, session is not a lecture lecture as such. I'm not going to give any lecture but going to have a dialogue with all of you. And uh, I would uh, really, uh, 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 I am looking forward to more uh, feedback, suggestions, questions uh, for PSF and also for me. Uh, I am a uh, uh, left activist. I uh, I uh, was with SFI. I'm still with SFI, and then I uh, work uh, with SCPM, so Communist Party of India, Marxist. So. Uh, it would be very uh, helpful for me also that if uh, my queer friends who are watching this from T Square collectives or maybe from uh, other collectives are uh, um, uh, listening to me, if they want to say something in particular and also uh, in general. So uh, uh, this is a very important month also because uh, we have uh, uh, six years of completion of NALSA judgment. And also yesterday was uh, International Lesbian Visibility Day. So in, uh, you know, at the backdrop of these two uh, uh, eventful days, it's uh, uh, important that PSF is organizing this lecture. And particularly to understand that what are the issues that the queer community is right now facing and how left uh, our progressive student organizations like PSF can actually uh, contribute more and can actually help uh, the queer community uh, to uh, you know fight against this pandemic also uh, later on. So let me first uh, give a very uh, brief uh, uh, you know uh, uh, introduction to the problem that we are right now facing from the queer community, and then we will talk about the more the left and the queer uh, politics. So uh, during the COVID nineteen pandemic that is uh, unfolded. And uh, with this uh, uh, Indian government, the central government, which is so inefficient to carry out any uh, proper, uh, you know, uh, measures, any proper uh, plan to fight this pandemic. So a lot of marginalized uh, people are uh, facing uh, problems. And obviously, we all know that the workers from the unorganized sector, they are facing the uh, most, uh, uh, you know, problems and uh, in terms of wage, in terms of food, in terms of security, in terms of shelter. And, uh, and at the same time, we also uh, have not heard a single word from uh, the central government uh, about the uh, queer community of India, that trans community, uh, the LGBT uh, community, that how, what will happen to them and how medicine, how um, uh, food, how shelter, will be provided to them. There is no such concrete plan. So this is a very serious uh, situation right now that uh, not only uh, we Indians are facing, but also within the larger Indian uh, population, the queer community in particular is also facing. And uh, at the same time, there are a lot of reports which are coming out that about domestic violence. So when we talk about domestic violence, we are generally right now focusing on uh, women and children, but at the same time, we should not forget that during this time, a lot of us are forced to stay inside, which is actually good that you, we all should stay inside and try not to uh, have, uh, you know, not to go out and have more social distancing, physical distancing. But the pro problem is that a lot of queer individuals are now confined 
within their family, uh, you know, the space. In that case, they are perhaps facing lot of violence, domestic violence from families, from relatives. Because before the lockdown, there was some kind of provision that they would go out for work to meet uh, queer community, other people from the queer community. But right now, they're confined. So it can happen both ways. One is that maybe the queer community, these individuals are now trying to have a, a great you know, bond with their families, which is very positive. Or on the other hand, they are now subject to more violence. So the positive side is always there and we are always hoping and wishing for it. But what is um, uh, concern uh, for us is that if they're facing domestic violence, if they're facing any kind of violence, then how to combat that, how to reach out to them, how to support them. That's a very important thing that we need to keep in mind. Another thing is that about medicine. Lot of queer uh, individuals are also uh, going through lot of uh, uh, you know uh, health problems, and particularly transgender uh, community. They need some kind of medicine when they are going through a transition period, and also HIV/AIDS uh, people from the queer community. So there is also a, a, a matter of uh, stigma and taboo, uh, which obviously HIV. Uh, 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 like it, it gets attached to anybody who is getting infected with HIV, but with queer people, it is more that, oh, you are gay, so you are transgender, so you must be a sex worker, or you must have uh, been a not a loyal person, so you have got infected. So these kind of stigmas are very much there in the society, and the queer community uh, every day uh, face uh, this kind of stigma, taboos, you know, biases. So how are they even fighting this you know, challenge right now during the time of epidemic, uh, this pandemic, and uh, in terms of medicine. I know that uh, uh, the government hospitals, NGOs, uh, government hospitals, uh, most of the departments are very sensitive towards this issue. So they are all working together and they are trying to reach out to queer people as much as possible. But uh, we also need to uh, do as much as uh, we can do. And, uh, and there comes the uh, role of the uh, left, that uh, what left is thinking about it and how left is doing. Because this government, which is a far right government, is definitely not doing anything for it. The left, uh, I have come across several uh, videos uh, on social media from Kerala, from uh, West Bengal particularly, where I have seen DYFI in particular distributing food, distributing basic essentials to the uh, transgender community. I have also seen uh, transgender community people, particularly Hijras, they are actually collecting money and they are giving food to uh, migrant workers in Uttar Pradesh, in Kerala, in West Bengal, in Delhi. So we need to understand that if all of us are working together and this government very shamelessly says that the government is not equipped to do perhaps anything for the marginalized population of this country, but it, it, it is the responsibility of the Indians to uh, take care of themselves. So, and, and obviously this government is, uh, I will talk about it, but then uh, in this uh, situation, we are seeing that common men, uh, LGBT queer community left, they're all coming together uh, and they are helping uh, people and each other also. So uh, a progressive uh, student forum uh, kind of a uh, you know, uh, group uh, or SFI uh, student organizations or any left student organization. So how they are going to reach out to these people? We need to brainstorm, we need to understand because, uh, because I'm sure a lot of left uh, groups are in touch with NGOs who are working with the queer community. But at the same time, we are still not very much uh, you know, uh, we, we don't know the information a lot because, uh, and then we, this is the, I think this is the time when we need to build this network and we need to understand that how we are going to reach out to our uh, queer friends and allies. So uh, this is my concern that I want to, uh, wanted to share with all of you that uh, during uh, this pandemic, uh, the issues that the queer community is facing and how we can reach out to them. And, uh, uh, and, and particularly, we are all at home, but with whatever resources we have, whatever uh, connections we have, how we can reach out to uh, the queer community. This is a concern that particularly left student organizations should take up and uh, address and uh, think about. 
Now, uh, today's session is uh, uh, little uh, is, is like the queer left politics uh, for education and uh, labor. So, how uh, queer and left politics can come together for uh, public education and also uh, for uh, labor rights. So, let us uh, uh, look at the. Uh, I will come to the critique of left later because I am a left activist and I keep talking to my comrades and. Uh, uh, I'm very thankful that I work with CPM where uh, my, most of my comrades listen to me and uh, encourage and uh, they also keep uh, uh, thinking on the issues perhaps which they have not thought before but now they are uh, thinking about it which is uh, which I think is uh, fantastic in terms of uh, queer left politics but uh, let me first talk about the queer politics in general, because uh, we all know that how queer uh, LGBT uh, politics in India or the movement, or I, I, I don't call it a movement, I call it more as more sporadic moments. It, uh, evolved, it developed, it started uh, uh, from 1994 onwards, and with several moments, it got uh, mobilized the queer activists across the country. But the problem with the queer activism in India, what I find is that lack of politicization and radicalization right now. The queer uh, activists, they uh, have formed collectives, they run uh, forums, they run support centers, but somehow we are not able to be politicized enough to give a shape to the queer movement in India. And I, I, I strongly believe in this because we have a lot of queer activists also in uh, who are also the right-wing uh, people who are supporter of uh, VHP, RSS, uh, BJP. And I wonder that being queer, how can they support this? And when we talk to them about politics, they are poor, and then we understand that they don't want to talk about the politics uh, which talk about capitalism, which talks about uh, equal, equality, which talks about justice. What they want to uh, know is that, okay, uh, patriarchy is a problem. Okay, no, we are also individuals and we need to uh, get our rights recognized. These are their concerns. These concerns, they and, and at the same time, they also talk about intersectionality. And when they talk about intersectionality, Sometimes they completely ignore the question of caste, the question of religion, the question of uh, you know other marginalized groups. That how uh, queer individuals are also in uh, those uh, marginalized communities or areas. So the queer politics in India is uh, quite, uh, I would say, not politicized enough and not radicalized at all. And uh, my association with queer politics started with uh, talking to members from SAPU for Equality, which is India's first LGBT organization in the eastern part of India. And uh, I have learned a lot from them. And uh, I have realized and one important thing that I have also learned from them is uh, the use of uh, language, like uh, Indian bhashas, you know. That uh, the way, because the way the West looks at the definitions and ideas of queerness and queer identities in India, it is very different. Uh, if we look at the transgender community, the way we look at transgender, we look at kinner, that, that definition of kinner or hijras or kothi, it's very different. And the way we uh, receive them, the way we uh, interact with them is also very different. So uh, I, I think that in India, what we need to do is that we need to uh, create our own definitions, terminologies, and understandings in different Indian languages to define queerness, to define queer identities. And then uh, our next uh, uh, you know, uh, project should be also to make the queer individuals, the queer citizens of India, to make them aware of the problems that uh, uh, queer community is facing in terms of uh, capital, in terms of labor, in terms of rights, and at the same time connected to the larger issues. If we are unable to do it, I don't think the queer uh, movement will be possible in India to take place. Because we have now uh, got uh, Section 377 uh, decriminalized. But the fight, this is like a transition period, like, you know, like what will happen next is the, is the thing that we need to understand, we need to think about. And for that, we need a radical politicization of the queer movement. 
Now here, what is important is the role of the left, that how the left is addressing this problem. So uh, we cannot ignore or deny the fact that left, uh, particularly CPM, uh, was the first political party to uh, address this issue in the election manifesto. But a lot of uh, my queer activist friends also uh, tell me that it is not uh, also uh, true that all the left activists or all the left leaders or the party uh, leadership actually understand the queer issues. I, I, I yes, they're pretty that yes, it is true, but left is our ally. And I don't want to use the word natural because a lot of friends and one friend uh, from Labia, uh, Chanika, so she's uh, uh, amazing. So she has told me that you don't use the word natural. I was very young when I was using the word natural, but now I don't want to use the natural even in air quotes. But uh, we have to understand that left is uh, the ally of the queer and queer is the ally of the left. Now the point is that the, the role of the left so how left is going to uh, you know, reach out to the queer uh, communities in India to actually bridge any gap if which is existing and uh, also at the same time to talk about left uh, politics to them and try to understand the queer politics from them. Because this is a very, um, uh, you know, this anecdote I have used uh, several times in several uh, forums. Because when we were doing a queer uh, film festival in JNU, uh, uh, Satram, which happened only two editions, and the third edition could not happen because of a lot of fiascos that happened in JNU. So, uh, in one of such events, there is this one queer activist who came and uh, told uh, me and others that, you know, I understand that smash capitalism, uh, smash patriarchy, but why smash capitalism? What is wrong with capitalism? And then we have, uh, and, and that was kind of a moment for me at least to see, uh, to uh, understand that a lot of queer uh, friends and activists, uh, particularly in Delhi that I know, they don't un uh, uh, think that patriarchy and capitalism are together that you can't look at them separate. They don't understand the caste issue. They don't understand the problem of uh, Islamophobia. And uh, we have several groups also on uh, several uh, social media groups where we keep uh, encountering lots of right-wing uh, queer people who are very vocal uh, in the support for Modi, Amit Shah. They are very Islamophobic, being queer, and uh, they talk in a very hardcore line of Hindutva. And this is, uh, this cannot be ignored. And, and I think we are quite late in addressing the issue, but we need to address the issue right now that why these queer individuals are constantly supporting this fascist government and its mass fronts. Why, uh, why these queer individuals are not trying to understand that what is the problem with uh, a government like uh, NDA led by BJP that who are anti-poor, anti-farmer, anti-worker, anti-student who are constantly in the mission to uh, privatize uh, uh, higher education. Even during this time of uh, pandemic, they're constantly trying to make everything online, trying to privatize uh, higher education. In a, uh, I think the privatization uh, mission has started uh, with a new phase of this pandemic. So why these uh, people are not addressing this issue? I feel that most of these queer individuals that we interact or who are very vocal on social media platform or who are generally very uh, active in the uh, queer collectives or forums or in socialization. So they are coming from a very upper class and upper caste background and particularly from the city or big towns. They do not understand this problem. The pro now the uh, solution to, the, uh, to this is that the left has to come. And the left has to uh, take the responsibility to reach out to these uh, queer groups, queer individuals, and uh, left has to, uh, left student organizations, particularly like PSF or SFI, they need to talk to uh, these queer individuals that what is the problem with this government. Unless and until we start this dialogue, we will not uh, be able to politicize the queer movement. At the same time, it is also the duty of the and responsibility of the queer individuals to make the left understand. There are a lot of queer uh, activist friends who keep on telling me that left does not understand. I admit that, okay, fine, all left activists don't understand. 
so but it is not like that that left will understand everything because i it, it is also a process yes we feel sad when left don't understand when left become biased when also left does not try to understand the queer issues this is very disheartening and we feel bad but what i have learned from my women activist friends from uh, cpm and uh, idwa and sfi and also from uh, uh, some of my queer feminist friends from safo is that we uh, the these women comrades never leave the ground they always keep the dialogue open and keep the dialogue going on i think this is very important because it is very easy to uh, attack left and say that oh left don't understand that we don't want to talk if you don't want to talk to the left then who will you will talk uh, talk to for politicization of your movement or to have a political alliance who is the opponent uh, who is right now fighting in the country against this uh, inefficient and uh, uh, anti poor uh, bjp government the left who is doing that unless and until we uh, make uh, the queer community understand this it is very uh, it is not possible to have a radical queer political movement in the country this also uh, makes us uh, uh, think about several issues that the queer and the left can jointly address uh, right now uh, the issue i'm not an economist but and I, i don't have much knowledge of economics as such but we all understand that the problems that the migrant workers are facing for example uh, uh, a very recent uh, thing that i would like to draw your attention to lot of students were stuck in quota in rajasthan and the up government made a provision arrangement for buses to go and get them and they are still doing it there are a lot of uh, flights which were uh, obviously the uh, people uh, they paid for it uh, a high amount they were uh, allowed to enter the country and obviously through uh, processes but the point is that what is the problem with these migrant workers you are giving them food somehow they are somehow managing one square meal but then they are not allowed to go back to their villages they want to go back and they get they want to get united to their families you are not allowing them to do that how can a government be so you know non uh, empathetic so how can the government have so much of apathy towards the workers this is a serious problem there are several uh, social media platforms where queer people uh, get connected and they talk they don't talk about it they not they at all not talk about it what they talk about is that how this government is trying its best to put a very strict uh, you know measure on this lockdown they are not able to even think that how this lockdown is affecting the poor this definitely comes because I, 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 because i'm sure that most of the square active uh, uh, friends who are now interacting on social media platform are coming from a bit upper class upper caste privileged position for them it is not possible to even think that what kind of uh, problems these poor or marginalized people are facing but they will understand the middle class queer people or the upper class upper caste queer people will understand once the left or left uh, minded people start talking to them about these issues i think there is a problem uh, within the left uh, the larger left politics that we are not able to reach out to these uh, individuals and i have said it several times that this is the, the this is the high time that when we should be militant we should be radical enough both the queer and the left activists to reach out to each other and reach out to these people who are constantly being queer supporting the right wing and this has to start from the school level organizations like sfi they start working from the school level so uh, and there are very few schools in the country who have uh, queer collectives in the school level so i think that we need to have this kind of queer collectives from the school level level and then colleges and then universities if that happens then we will be able to reach out uh, to lot of people because we have to keep in mind that the present uh, government this bjp government has shown us on our face that you know that how well organized they are in reaching out to people with fake news they how well organized they are in reaching out to people with their propaganda to counter them it is important for us to actually to reach to, to fight against this and to and the fight can only happen when we will uh, reach out to people with our uh, agenda with our points with our why why we are resisting this 
uh, right wing governments and outfits like Vishu Hindu Parishad, RSS, who are extremely Islamophobic. Like recently, the, the way they are constantly and, and for past two days, I'm seeing these uh, videos which are getting circulated that how uh, something called Hindu army or Vishwa Bajrangal constantly going and trying to create a division between uh, in the marketplace between the uh, Hindu uh, uh, shopkeepers and the Muslim shopkeepers. In this time when this entire country needs to be united, in this time when this entire country uh, needs some kind of solidarity across all, uh, uh, you know, aspects, religion, caste, you know, politics, the BH uh, right-wing people are actually, uh, uh, you know, making this kind of a division. So this is expect. This was expected, and this has now uh, come true. That how and, and, and they are they will not be able to do it unless and until they have the directives for, or, the, or the directions or the instructions from uh, leadership. That is uh, BJP and RSS. So when this happens, so we need to understand that. Uh, how uh, uh, during even this pandemic, uh, during the time of pandemic, how this right wing government is constantly spreading hatred, Islamophobia, and a, a politics of division. The only solution to this is that the left has to uh, lead the resistance, the movement, and people have to rally behind the left. In doing so, the left has to reach out to all kind of uh, people, all kind of groups who can be the ally uh, uh, of the left. And in this case, obviously, the queer groups. And uh, we can discuss uh, further that uh, how we can uh, think about this kind of, uh, you know, uh, ally, uh, formation of uh, friendship and alliance. And at the same time, uh, you know, uh, if you, uh, how can the queer collectives, the campus queer collectives, can uh, play a, a very important role in uh, mobilizing uh, people? So I will uh, stop here for some time. If you have questions, then uh, we will take up a question and then we can discuss. Yes, so I can read out the questions since you are doing Zoom app. So I'll read out the questions from our MP live. Uh, the first question is Could you please talk a little about the rural urban divide among queer people? how the urban queer aspires to replicate Western queer movement and how we need to take the fight from rural grounds. Okay, like you can give me two more okay. questions. And then yeah. uh, how do you look at the romanticization of historical mythological Hindu culture in relation to queerness? One example I can think of is Lakshmi Narayan Tripathi. What do you think about this? Okay. Uh, how, should I give, there are two more or you? We'll you can give me a, one more and then yeah. yeah. How do you look at the politics of representation as a means of creating solidarity of workers? Can you repeat the question? Politics of? How do you look at the politics of representation as a means of creating solidarity for workers? Okay. Yeah. So the first question is very important. That is the rural urban divide. And uh, as I have uh, said, a lot of people who are activists, who are very progressive, who are left leaning, they have uh, talked about it uh, several times. That uh, uh, the, so the, the queer movement uh, or the queer struggle in India started in 1993-94, I think, with the, uh, uh, as an AIDS awareness program. And uh, there was a movement uh, when some people wanted to uh, distribute condoms to the uh, male prison inmates at Tihar jail when it was stopped and then they went to high court and then high court said no, it is uh, uh, true that a lot of people are actually getting infected with STD after coming to uh, inside the prison because they're having same sex. And uh, so uh, that somehow uh, st started to talk about same sex relationship post uh, or in the early 1990s. Uh, and then we have uh, one very important film called Tamanna uh, in 97, I think, uh, which got, uh, which is about uh, a transgender uh, protagonist. And same year, uh, which was uh, 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 received very well. And then the same year we have uh, Fire. 
getting released for three weeks fire uh, ran very smoothly and nicely and then the bajram dal and then the right uh, women wing of uh, uh, vhp and uh, rss they uh, burned cinema halls did uh, went on a ruckus and uh, fight and and uh, stopped uh, the screening of the film fire and said that lesbian thing is not indian which is very funny because if you go to several um, uh temples and other uh, 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 myths you will find that there's a reference to uh, lesbian culture because uh, even the holy river uh, ganges it's uh, who was brought on earth uh, by uh, the prince bhagirat he was born out of uh, two women and like uh, two vaginas and that's why his name is called bhagirat like uh, two bhagas and uh, so 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 this happened and uh, i think a lot of people uh, the queer feminists they have termed the uh, coined the term called fire moment of lgbt struggle in india and uh, that's how the lgbt struggles in india started and then brinda farath uh, from cpm she uh, was a first prominent uh, uh, political leader to address the issue and particularly the question of section 377 and then we knew about the nas foundation and the long battle and 2009 uh, delhi high court decriminalized it 2013 uh, it was uh, decriminalized by supreme court and again it is now decriminalized so we know all these things but in all these thing what happened is that the queer struggle or the activism started evolving or developing in the urban centers that is cities or now big towns you can say now, we we completely fail to uh, realize that uh, there are queer individuals also in rural areas in villages and uh, perhaps they don't have a language to uh, express and because the, uh, the queer struggle that has happened uh, in india happened in the language in of english and uh, there is a book called queer voices from the indian campuses if you can read that book it also talks about it and uh, so this rural urban divide is still very much existing now the so there is a very important anecdote that i want it's a very important experience for me because when we were uh, participating in the delhi queer pride uh, work and uh, so this one person from uh, haryana from a very uh, from the district of jind he uh, came to us and he i think said from the stage that uh, you know you guys are can still hold hand and know the word gay or you can talk in english and you can express yourself imagine us staying in a rural uh, place of haryana where people don't know about it where uh, you know female feticide infanticide are very much common The, uh, you know the khap panchayat is so much active in this uh, you know in, in a state like haryana so there when we talk about uh, ourselves as queer individuals we are putting ourselves at great risk and uh, that has made us really think and again i would uh, refer to sappho because i have seen sappho's work that uh, sappho uh, translates most of its pamphlets uh, in uh, bangla and uh, they travel in local trains where the daily uh, workers particularly do, uh, workers who work as domestic help they travel from the rural uh, areas close to uh, calcutta travel to calcutta every morning so they, the, the the women activists of sapo go on train board the train distribute the pamphlet and try to tell them in their language that if you find a girl who has uh, who has boyish you know the uh, attitude or who has short hair who is little manly is very aloof please this is our number if she wants to talk to us please let her know that uh, she can reach out to us most of these women and women are very sensitive so most of these women workers they understand it but they don't have the vocabulary but they know that there are uh, you know uh, uh, uh issue something which are existing like this because queer thing was queerness uh, existed since time eternal so you know so this rural urban divide is still existing in india and this can be bridged this can be um, taken care of if we concentrate on a very important aspect that is language if we develop queer literature queer ideas queer politics in indian bhashas then it will be easier for us to reach out to more people at the same time 
uh, it is also again the duty and the responsibility of the left organizations and mass fronts who are also acting very much and I, but we all have to agree that uh, to this fact that left is uh, the force which work uh, in the uh, uh, queer, uh, in, you know, in, in, in the rural areas. So in that case, if left uh, organizations, mass fronts, if they take up this issue of queer issues and talk to the rural uh, citizens, then it will be a kind of our awareness. There is definitely rural India understands what queerness is with media and with so much of uh, you know, Bollywood also, in Hindi cinema also stereotyping uh, and with all this kind of representations, rural India understands now that what is gay, what is lesbian, they have their own terminologies. Like if you go to Haryana, they will call uh, a guy like me, maybe uh, 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 gila. you know, they have their own terminologies. We need to honor this, we need to collaborate uh, with these uh, local groups and we need to create uh, this vocabulary list on uh, different queer terminologies across India. And then only I think this rural urban divide can be somehow, uh, you know, we can achieve uh, a kind of a position where this uh, gap can be bridged and, uh, and we can reach out to more uh, queer people in the rural uh, India. The next question is romanticization of history and uh, myth, particularly, and with the Lakshmi uh, Narayan Tripathi. So the Lakshmi Tripathi is definitely an upper uh, caste uh, transgender woman. And uh, the way India looks at transgender issues is very different from the West looks at transgender issues. Uh, in the, we don't look at uh, India, uh, in India, we don't look at transgender, uh, transgenders as medical cases transgender uh, individuals as, as medical cases, the way the West has, uh, is still looking at them. So we have a very uh, intense and a very complex relationship with uh, transgenders. If you do read Ramayana, we will know that how uh, uh, they're mentioned in the transgender community is also mentioned in uh, the epic there. So we have a very different uh, relation and understanding of uh, transgender people. but. We generally look at them as skinner, that is intersex. Uh, some people use the harm of the word, but uh, I would say intersex and uh, as uh, kinners and uh, and now hijras also. But the, the term transgender is an umbrella term. There are a lot of identities that fit under this term. So when we talk about transgender politics, we need to also take into account all these identities. And this romanticization uh, is very uh, in, uh, interesting because uh, I think UPCM Yogi Adityanath said that, you know, uh, when uh, I think he said something like this, that the left often talks about uses uh, myths and history, mythological references when they want to talk about these square issues and everything. Why shouldn't we uh, talk about all these things? Because these have existed uh, the, the, uh, for so long. and. Uh, uh, romanticization is very uh, problematic. I don't believe in this idea of romanticization and symbolic use. But I'm very happy the way the Indian citizens have used the national flag, national anthem, and uh, the Constitution of India as symbol of uh, symbols of resistance. I completely support that. But this uh, symbolic, uh, you know, romanticization and the romanticization of the symbols very uh, full of smears, full of tropes. And uh, so if I'm a transgender community leader I, uh, and uh, I go for kumbh mela bathing or something ritual, and if I promote a very hyper uh, Hindutva uh, uh, you know, spectacle, then there is also a risk that I'm also giving, uh, I'm also allowing hyper masculine nationalist Hindutva sentiments to peep in, to come into uh, the queer space. And I think Lakshmi Narayan Tripathi uh, somehow does that because uh, she uh, comes from a very upper uh, caste and um, uh, privileged uh, position. And the way she performs, the way she uh, talks about it, she's definitely a very important voice. And I hope that, uh, I, I'm sure she has a very left-leaning self in her also. And I hope that one day she will also maybe perhaps uh, help us to mobilize the transgender community and uh, try to uh, join the left, uh, that would be fantastic. 
but uh, what she does is that she uh, creates uh, this kind of a spectacle i would say which is uh, very dangerous because it it puts the transgender community of india more as a hindu community more as uh, a community which is attached to hindu religion but then what about the uh, transgender uh, people uh, from other faith from islam from uh, parsi religion from uh, sikhism so there are also transgender individuals who have different uh, religious uh, faith attached to them so they are not getting represented or they are or, or this appropriation of, of transgender identities on the indian soil becomes very uh, dangerous because then it becomes all hindu and there is a this is a very uh, you know uh, common thing that uh, this is the land of hindus so we are all hindus so a transgender who is a muslim dalit transgender is perhaps also hindu so this is trope that we are constantly getting into and we need to address it we need to stop it but before that we need to mobilize ourselves and at the same time we need to politicize ourselves the transgender community is huge and uh, we have to agree that we have learned lot of uh, uh, aspects of activism from the transgender communities they have taught us what is queerness how to fight for the queer rights and uh, Uh, in that case uh, we need to also uh, get them uh, politicized further and let them reach out to us and uh, try to uh, uh, tell them that uh, uh, this kind of spectacle is very dangerous the third question is the politics of representation as a means of solidarity for workers i don't know that uh, you uh, some of you who are listening to it might uh, find it very um, funny but this is my dream that one day c2 will lead the queer pride march in one of the cities in the country because uh, again uh, queer collectives they uh, play a very important role in uh, solidarity they play a very important role in awareness play a very important role in politicization of the campus and uh, queer communities and uh, jnu had from where i belong to so it had uh, anjuman and uh, then it had uh, dhanak and now it is having hasrate so these are the queer collectives from jnu and in one of such events uh, organized by uh, one of the uh, i think dhanak so uh, a film which was shown was uh, pride and it talks about the uh, workers uh, joining i think 1984 82 pride march in london and leading it because the uh, workers went on a strike and obviously the the government was uh, very um, uh, not very uh, considerate of them and the queer individuals they came together and then they uh, started uh, organizing themselves organizing fund and the workers definitely they and these workers are left leaning workers so they did not talk about to the queer people first they said oh no no we, we this is against our culture we don't support you guys you are anarchists or all these things but the queer individuals did not stop the dialogue they kept going kept helping and the workers at a point realized that these queer individuals are with us and they are for the workers because these queer individuals are also workers you know we are after stu uh, our studentship gets over we will go uh, to the job market and we become workers we become laborers so what is the difference and uh, and then the, this pride march when this was happening the workers they took the lead and they uh, led the queer pride march this is my uh, dream and i think this dream will come very uh, will come true very soon that when we will have uh, uh, trade unions like c2 uh, who will lead the queer pride march and they will they will uh, i i'm sure c2 leadership understands this and they will but they will come and openly say that yes we understand that where rights are also workers rights part of workers rights and uh, because we cannot uh, deny the fact that there are queer individuals within the workers unions also so are the workers unions uh, actually or the labor unions are actually addressing the queer issues within the union because we have seen that uh, the mainstream left has taken a lot of time to actually address these issues within the uh, organization level so but i'm sure we are uh, uh, moving towards that point where uh, trade unions will also come together and uh, all the left trade unions will come together and they will talk about it and they will say that yes we are uh, we are uh, 
uh, under we understand the query issues and we want to address it as work part of the work as well. Goal of this dream will come true one day. Okay. I'll move to next questions. Uh, so the question is, how do we build sustained mobilization based on intersectionality? Dalit politics has built solidarity based on caste, Marxist, through class, etc. If we allow for dynamic identity in politics, which is necessary, how do we continue to build long-term solidarities? Is there any other question? Yes, yes, there are a lot of questions. Okay, so... Uh... So uh, I think I have already answered this question that, you know, sustaining uh, kind of, a, uh, a more, you know, uh, intersectionality. We definitely talk about intersectionality, but we also need to understand that the intersectionality lies where. Like, for example, uh, I strongly believe that we cannot go with any religious fundamentalist organizations because they oppose the uh, uh, right wing Hindutva religious uh, fundamentalist organizations. You know, for example, uh, we have uh, Islamic fundamentalist uh, organizations, student organizations also who want to say that come, why don't you come and work with us? Because uh, we have a fraction of the Dalit student organizations also who are going with, uh, um, you know, um, Islamic fundamentalist organizations because they are anti-left. You can be anti-left, which is good. But then to defeat left, you can't say that this is our politics of intersectionality. That, you know, they are also marginalized because they are religious fundamentalists. We are marginalized because we are also uh, caste marginalized. Okay, this cannot be your politics, or this is not politics of uh, constructive politics. This is politics of disruption and opportunistic politics. I'm not naming because this is a, a fantastic evening we are having. So I'm not exactly naming such uh, student organizations, but uh, there are these student organizations, I believe, exist on this campus. I believe exist on DU campus. I believe exist in JNU campus or also in um, other campuses across the country. We need to be very much aware, friends. We need to be very much aware and we need to be very much vigil about this kind of opportunistic uh, outfits who in, in the name of intersectionality wants to uh, form this kind of collaborations, but then they fail to do it because they're opportunist and then they uh, delay, they almost delay the uh, fight for the cause and, the, and we are fighting for equality, we are fighting for justice, we are fighting for rights for marginalized sections and workers and for education, because this is our right, this is not a privilege. So this kind of sustenance uh, of intersectionality and movement will only happen when we are vigilant, we are aware, we are very clear about our politics, that what we want to say, how we are sticking to our politics. If we stick to that, then definitely we will also fight this, because our fight is not only against the prominent right-wing uh, Hindu outfits, our fight is also against this kind of small opportunistic outfits who in the name of identity, who in the name of marginalization, who in the name of other kind of oppression, try to forge a kind of an alliance which is opportunistic in nature. So we have to be very aware of all these opportunistic forces. Our next question is, should I read out the questions at least two, three? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, how is the association of queer left politics and radicalization of the same affected by the influence of the liberal ideology. Okay. okay. Next is, how do you look at some of the discriminatory laws passed by this government, like the surrogacy bill, trans bill, etc., in the times of pandemic? Uh, there is a comment, a timely call to live for an effective intervention in this dismal situation. Can you repeat the last question? A comment, a timely call to the left for an effective intervention in this dismal situation. Okay. There's one so, more uh, question. Okay. Yeah. Just take it. Uh, if there is still time, I would like to hear you speak of the limitations of campus-centric queer politics and how that might be addressed. Okay. What was the first question you forgot? Before the surrogacy one? Yeah. How is the association of queer left politics? Oh, the liberal politics. Yeah. yeah. Radicalization yeah. and liberal ideology. Yeah. So, uh, uh, friends, it is uh, understood that uh, with these uh, neoliberal policies, uh, it affects uh, the queer uh, uh, politics uh, in India uh, uh, a lot. Because, for example, uh, uh, the Delhi queer pride 
march which is organized is very interesting to see every year the same kind of repetition of politics that happens that uh, why are we not taking money from mncs i have attended one queer pride march of bombay and i have seen exactly the opposite thing which is happening in bombay and uh, which is very uh, important for us to understand that uh, mncs which fund which wants to fund a uh, queer pride march are they uh, coming of, uh, to us and saying that yes we have uh, proper laws and committees against sexual harassment uh, against women at workplace are these mncs saying that we work for adivasi uh, rights uh, uh, out of our corporate social responsibility uh, chapters are these mncs talking about uh, workers uh, wage minimum workers wage these mncs perhaps do not talk about all these things when they do not talk about all these things why should queer organizations or collectives or platforms reach out to them for kind uh, for any kind of support financial or uh, support because this is very uh, because this is a trend that the mncs are right now approaching uh, the queer uh, individuals and saying that we will give you the job because you know nobody gives you the job who says that nobody gives you if if nobody is giving us the job it is our duty then to fight the neo liberal policies and to get our rights recognized and to get our rights to uh, get employed in in government offices and which we are doing the government has uh, sanctioned it but the mncs plays this very beautiful liberal uh, very rosy kind of a picture that you come to us but when we go to there and we get a job because dignified labor uh, um, uh, dignified way of earning to sustain your life is important for all of us whether you are queer whether you are not queer but when we get this kind of job we have to also be aware that what kind of exploitation also happens within this uh, liberal spaces and uh, I, and i am sorry to say that most of the queer individuals who face so much of sufferings and oppressions when they get this much of little bit of uh, you know hope they grab it and they completely uh, overlook it it's a kind of a compromise they overlook this kind of uh, the problems that these liberal uh, spaces also um, posit to them this we need to uh, uh, think also and address and uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, liberal organizations and mncs who are also working particularly for transgender people after the uh, um, uh, you know uh, this war but it is also important that we need to talk to these mncs also that how they are drafting their constitution how they are talking so this is very important the surrogacy bill has been passed uh, by late uh, susma swaraj and uh, 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 surrogacy uh, she, the idea was that it had turned into an industry but uh, i don't call it an industry because uh, some women uh, yes they uh, uh, took up the uh, uh, means to be surrogate mothers for someone and give birth to children but uh, surrogacy law which was passed by this government in the first phase obviously take a very important right of family and happiness from the queer individuals so this is very uh, important that uh, and and uh, our fight friends uh, don't end uh, uh, with this pandemic it will Uh, become intense and we have to uh, stay connected we have to mobilize and we have to uh, brainstorm that how are we going to fight this modisha uh, dictatorship which is they are aiming for 2024 so when we talk about the queer left politics we need to also understand the larger national politics that is coming for in 2024 and we need to strengthen our uh, strong uh, Uh, points we need to strengthen our uh, uh, fight and we need to think for 2024 and this kind of laws which are passed need to also be come in our election manifesto in our uh, um, programs the call for the left is that uh, yes uh, the queer individuals uh, uh, should uh, reach out to the left the left also should reach out to the queer uh, forums 
and uh, left uh, the way i have always said that the queer individual should not shy away from the set or, or you should, should not uh, stop any kind of dialogue with the left the left also should not talk, stop any kind of dialogue because it is true that sometimes left also uh, gets into the trap of very heterosexist uh, comments and uh, way of uh, functioning sometimes but uh, uh, comrades are comrades because if a comrade is wrong the duty of the other comrade is to tell the other comrade that yes you are wrong at this point your politics is wrong in terms of gender and sexuality please check it please try to understand and uh, this is how uh, comrades evolve this is how comrades become strong and uh, uh, the left has to left understands this very sincerely and very seriously the uh, left party that i am associated with organizations that i have seen within my uh, with my party they take this uh, concern they take this uh, um, uh, challenge very seriously and uh, uh, the left has to give a call for a larger uh, mobilization for a larger alliance and definitely uh, take the queer uh, individuals with it uh, the last question is limitation of uh, i forgot the last uh, question is limitation yeah. of limitation of campus centric queer politics and how that might be addressed i think the limitations of campus centric queer collectives of the campus centric queer politics is that uh, uh, let's say for campus like this or a campus like jnu or, or delhi university or let's say ambedkar university uh, or jadavpur university it will have it, it, they will be mostly residential campuses or non residential campuses they will have a, a little bit of reach out but what i would say i don't know but i have just been to tis once when uh, professor shilva fatke from mass communication did a very uh, interesting workshop i went there to attend and i think i went only then after once uh, but what i uh, can tell uh, from my experience of being uh, in jain that uh, if you some of you who are aware of jnu's uh, geographical location there is an urban village just outside jain lot of jnu students who are passed out they stay there cheap accommodation also the campus is very close by you have nostalgic feelings for your campus you try to sometimes come to the campus use the library or meet your old friends juniors the point is that when this kind of uh, residential campuses uh, develop this kind of queer collectives it is also important for us to reach out to the immediate surrounding neighborhood of these campuses that is the that is how the limitations of the queer campus uh, campus queer collectives will be broken because all these campuses that i am talking about we have to admit these are very elite campuses that these are in cities and uh, dive students come but uh, these institutions all uh, uh, enjoy some kind of privileges uh, so when you have a queer ca uh, campus queer collective in such kind of institution your duty your responsibility your uh, agenda is to make the teaching non teaching and the student aware of the queer issues on campus because when they go out of the campus they will take they will carry your ideas with them and then immediately you reach out to the immediate surrounding neighborhood uh, which is uh, surrounding the campus then only i think this queer collectives will be very effective jnu queer collective is doing bit i organized a program with some of my friends called rainbow walk queer in the campus where for the first time i would say lot of uh, non teaching staff and shopkeepers they we interacted with them and i was almost forced to speak in hindi and my hindi is extremely bad atrocious so uh, with whatever my broken hindi i try to uh, talk about sexuality gender and rights and love to them and but which is very important is that that opened a kind of a space for dialogue which again for many uh, reasons the queer collective uh, was not very uh, Uh, active on campus, but it is now getting active with Hasrat. I am very hopeful. So, uh, so what happened is that so they then come and uh, then they um, uh, these shopkeepers, these non-teaching staff, they came and joined our event. I think that that moment we overcome, we overcame the limitation of campus welfare. So, if we keep these things in mind, if we become more creative in our 
approach in our reach out programs. I think the limitation there, the, there is nothing called limitation. I don't believe in that. I think we'll be able to reach out to more people. Yes, we will not be able to uh, bring uh, revolutionary change to India, which is perhaps uh, this is also uh, Lenin's 150th uh, birth anniversary we just passed. So we'd not be able to bring the revolutionary change from this campus with PSF or with SFI from JNU or uh, in JU. But definitely, if we all contribute a little bit and if we reach out to uh, our immediate surrounding, we will definitely overcome all these limitations. Is there so any the more question? question? No, no, the questions have ended. There are a lot of regards okay. and uh, hearts. Uh, so you can make a concluding remark. Our time slot is also uh, over right now. I, I really like what B, uh, PSF is doing in this like, lockdown series and Bonashruta Dev, I think she did a very uh, fantastic musical performance. I am a uh, theater artist performer. Uh, so uh, I was listening to her uh, session and she sang a song, The Stood by the Pakistani poet. Jalib, and uh, there is this line that you know I will not uh, I will not uh, accept this uh, corruption, this loot that you are doing, and I will also not uh, accept this uh, uh, decay of reason also that you are uh, promoting. I think uh, at the end I would say that uh, time has come for us to really think about politics. Uh, sincerely and honestly and question this government, an uh, efficient government is accountable to its citizen. This government is not accountable and this government is not efficient at all to take care of India. We need to mobilize ourselves as square left individuals. We need to reach out to people. We need to strengthen our uh, strongholds and we need to uh, look at uh, the, the, the politics uh, and the fight and the resistance will happen after the uh, lockdown is over, after almost the pandemic is over because uh, a horror is waiting for us in terms of economy, in terms of wage, in terms of education. Uh, some of us who are very lucky to maybe pass out this year, from next year onwards, it will be a horror for all of us. And as students, activists, and left square activists, we need to understand what is waiting for us. And uh, uh, we need to uh, keep in mind that our fight is now beginning. And the fight is to defeat this fascist government in the 2024 election. And uh, we will uh, defeat it because we don't accept this uh, corruption, this loot. Uh, we don't accept this uh, decay of reason. So with this, uh, uh, there, yeah. only, there is one more question. Would you like to take? Uh, yes. Uh, there is no doubt that there, there are multiple levels of oppression arising out of different aspects of one's identity. However, do you think the discourse of intersectionality often becomes a liberal tool to neglect class due to the largely urban upper class composition of many collectives and as a result becomes a weaker slogan than a radical tool? Uh, I somehow um, believe in this because I think uh, the politics of intersectionality, if it is not pronounced in the right political approach and uh, in the right political way, it actually can give uh, space to uh, liberal, uh, neoliberal policies and uh, ideas to uh, come in. And that will dilute the uh, intensity of the queer left politics. And uh, when we, uh, intersectionality is definitely important, definitely uh, very uh, necessary, but intersectionality is also uh, very uh, important to, uh, it is important to understand that what do we mean by intersectionality? We are uh, uh, getting into this politics of intersectionality with, who, with whom? Uh, like I cannot uh, get into uh, this uh, politics of intersectionality with MNC who uh, does not support Adivasi rights who does not support minimum wage right. I cannot get into an intersectional politics of intersectionality with an organization which says that to defeat the uh, religious Hindutva uh, politics, I need to be also uh, fun, uh, religious fundamentalist uh, opposing the Hindutva. So this kind of uh, opportunistic intersectional politics of intersectionality uh, is dangerous, as I've said. So. Um, uh, we uh, yes I, uh, I I think it's a very urban, uh, very privileged uh, uh, position of uh, talking about intersectionality. When we talk about intersectionality, when we talk about intersectionality, we need to talk about intersectionality with 
workers from informal sectors migrant workers who are right now getting not getting meal or basic essentials when we talk about intersectionality we need to understand that what a dalit muslim girl feels in a rural india you know who is also queer when we talk about intersectionality we need to see that when a topper uh, from a particular class is now selling fruits or essentials in the market because there is no uh, wage or there is no uh, you know uh, food left in his or her place uh, so this kind of if we reach out to this kind of people if we bring these people um, into politics if we understand their politics their issues then the question and politics of intersectionality comes and uh, fulfills its uh, desired goal but uh, if it is just for um, opportunistic then it's very much liberal in nature very much uh, elite in nature very much privileged in nature and we should just throw away this kind of opportunistic politics on behalf of progressive students forum i would like to thank you for taking this session uh hati and sometimes we would like to get you on campus also i hope you'll come there is a uh, film by my uh, oh so uh, from this platform i should also request uh, other individuals who are watching this and also if you can pass on this thing there is a filmmaker called debolina from uh, calcutta who is a very fantastic queer filmmaker and she makes very important queer films and one of the queer films that she has made with me and my phd one of my phd supervisor is on marriage and understanding of marriage from a queer left politics so uh, if psf can sometime uh, invite uh, this film through the bolini it is uh, funded by uh, film division uh, it's called gave india matrimony and uh, jab we met and uh, debolina also is in the process of making another film on the violence or not violence uh, on solidarity that the queer individuals are facing right now in their families during the time of pandemic so if you know queer individuals who are in this lockdown confined to their uh, domestic spaces and either they are facing domestic violence or different kind of uh, torture in the, in the domestic space or they are, have now opened up to their families and they have their families have also opened up to them and have embraced them so the positive and the negative sides both so if you know this kind of individuals then please get in touch with me i am easily available on facebook and also on gmail which is my name on facebook.jnu@gmail.com please write to me and i can put you in touch with debolena so that would be wonderful and definitely i can come to uh, <laughs> if psf calls definitely i love to come to this campus all right thank you so much so with this thank we'll you for today's session thank yeah. you so much Thank you so much for calling. Thanks.